Hey, welcome to Vortex Garage, and well, yet another video like ones you've probably seen in the past. Uh, well, we have a new project here in the shop, and well, it doesn't necessarily mean that any of our other projects are necessarily done, but it does mean that we had to do a big cat rescue. And what I mean by that is this right here, this 1989 Jaguar XJS with the V12. And uh, well, this is now in for some work. Looks like a beautiful car here on the picture, and it certainly is, and we're gonna show you that up close, but it has one serious issue, which is that it currently doesn't run. So we're gonna to hope to get it running on the video today, but we're also gonna just show you the external and maybe the interior of the car here before we put it on the lift, and just sort of talk through some of the things that this car will need even once we get it running. It's like many XJSs, it's gonna need some things to kind of just bring it into the modern era in terms of maintenance and making sure that we don't have catastrophic issues with the car, like engine fires. We'll talk about that in a second. But in the meantime, let's go ahead and grab a camera and just show you this car. And then what we're gonna do is hopefully, hopefully get it running today. But uh, that's a big hopeful, we'll see. So we'll go with the GoPro for you, and I got my light here, but uh, one of the things you'll see here on this 89 is a convertible, and it does have the uh, basket style wheels on it, which is really cool, and this car is very clean, as you can tell. This is original paint, original chrome, uh, everything on this thing is really good. Now, it might look like the hood's not aligned right, well, it's just because I, well, the bonnet, I always say that. The bonnet is popped, so we can open it, so that actually does sit pretty well but the rest of the car looks really, really nice. The interior, we'll just give you a quick view. The seats have been recovered in leather. See something jumping out at us that no doubt you caught. It does have an aftermarket steering wheel. Um, I'd love to know a little more about this. I've been Googling and Googling, and the best I can come up with is it may be a Nardi steering wheel, but I can't find the specific model. There's a few other Nardi wheels that look kind of similar, but can't find this exact one. It could also be a Momo, or it could be some, other aftermarket wheel that I'm not familiar with. 49,269 miles on the odometer. See if I can get that in for you to see. We'll do some close-ups on the interior later, but probably one of the biggest issues it has in the interior is the wood veneer on the console is not looking the best. And we do have some switches popped out, which uh, we have some parts to repair those from the previous owner. The interior headliner to the convertible top was redone when the seats were redone. And as you can see, it looks really nice. We'll get some more views of that when we do some more in-depth videos. Really today, I did want to show you the external of the car, but I want to focus on trying to get this thing to run because it's currently been pushed in here where the lift is and not being able to move it. Well, that does cramp our style a little bit. It would be nice to be able to start the car and move it on its own power instead of pushing it. You can see the convertible top itself is original and is in good condition. Uh, the interior uh, headliner to the cover was redone, but the exterior of fabric is original. There is one little tear here, as you can see. So let me know in the comments, is there a fabric adhesive that I could put on there? Something like a, I'm thinking like tent repair for canvas, but some sort of a nice canvas sort of adhesive that I could put on there that would actually stop that from tearing further and hopefully not be too visible. Something transparent or black that I could just kind of help bring that together. Um, I definitely don't want to put in the expense of replacing this top that looks great and is original, but at the same time I certainly don't want that tear to form any further. Inside the car you can see the boot cover um, kind of haphazardly tossed it in there. Not the boot cover, the, the lid, the hood cover. I think that you call these the hood, whereas that's the bonnet up front, this is the hood, and this is your boot. But anyway, our hood cover is there, the fabric uh, cover, and it's in really nice condition. I put it in there because we had this toad here and uh, it was going on backwards on the car and I didn't want the windshield to turn into a giant air brake or sail. And uh, yeah, so we put the top up and just kind of toss that in there. All the windows appear to work. Again, down the sides, everything looks really, really nice. Apparently this car was in an accident at some point in this rear quarter. It wasn't a major accident. And everything I can tell was, I can't see where the repairs were done. Um, there is a very, very slight difference to the paint, which you can see only by shining the light on it. I think the GoPro can pick it up. 
So you can tell this quarter panel's paint is maybe just a tad fresher and there's a few little dips and drops in it that you can tell that it was redone and not factory, but you have to really shine a bright light in it and get up close. It looks really good. Another interesting thing here is the color difference, which again, hopefully that comes up one way or the other on this uh, GoPro. You can see the color difference where our license plates go versus the rest of the car. So I'd be kind of curious to see if any polishing or whatnot would help restore that deeper red. It's almost in the light, I'm a little more pinkish, like the pigment is uh, a little pinker. It's probably clear coat issue. So again, maybe a detailer can let me know what we can do there. The paint itself though, really, really nice overall shape. Very few dents and dings. There's a couple little scratches, like, uh, like there's a couple little imperfections right there you can kind of see in the light, but that's about it. Again, on the interior, everything's looking really, really nice in there. Really just the seats too. I mean, that's a, a pretty big expenditure to have them recovered in leather. So that's kudos to the prior owner for that. The door looks like it's good. Again, the wheels all look really nice. Tires are interesting. It has, you probably wouldn't expect this on a Jag, the Mickey Thompson's. A set of Mickey Thompson's on it. And I couldn't find a date code on these tires on the outside. Uh, or what I did find, is see here like this M82 and, and whatnot in the DOT numbers there. There's not a four digit code. And that kind of implies that these tires would have been pre 2000. So these might be 25 ish year old tires. They certainly don't look like it. They don't look that rotted. Now I can tell you on the spare, which was also a Mickey Thompson on the back side, there were raised white letters and I did find a date code on the spare that said 2014. That makes a little more sense. So it could just be that the date codes on the opposite side of the tires and when we get it on the lift and we see behind, then we'll be able to validate that. At any rate, new tires is in this car's future. And uh, you tell me what tire would you put on an XJS to kind of keep it period correct? Um, to me, a Mickey Thompson ain't necessarily cutting it. Plus, they're old and, and aged. They're out of date. They need to be replaced. But what would you put on? A Dunlop? Uh, is there a period correct tire that isn't prohibitively expensive? I don't want to put a $400 per tire option on this. But is there something out there that you would put in? Well, let me know. Coming around here again, we can see there are a few scratches and dings and nicks, things that we can probably have worked out. They're really not that bad. You can, I don't even know if I can pick them up with the GoPro. They're there if you look very carefully. But the fact that you have to look very carefully tells you how hard they are to see. And there's one right here. I think you can see that one pretty good. That's a little bit of a paint nick there. So that could probably be repaired pretty easily. So not my skill or forte, but I would imagine that a good detailer or a good paint shop could probably work wonders on this paint job and bring it back to near perfection. And that's really good. And the other thing, the stainless and the chrome, no pitting, perfectly shiny, a little bit of misalignment here, I noticed. So maybe this was tapped at some point, maybe this bumper on the side and it just sort of pushed this up. We can fix that. That's not too bad. It looks like it just needs to be popped back in and reset. But uh, yeah. V12 logo, hints at what's hiding underneath. Oh, it doesn't really hint, I guess it tells you. And it does have the leaper on it. And again, I don't know if you can see, but see that little round circle there? The leaper was repl is replacing the original round badge that would have been there. And you can tell that round badge had been there for some time as the paint has a different shade there. So the question is, again, everyone loves a leaper, um, though on my 83 XJ6, I've been very reluctant to install one, but I think they look good. And when I do see them, I always like them. But the question is, do you keep the leaper or do you put the, the uh, original logo back on and also get rid of that little circle there? Who knows? All right, so let's open up the bonnet and take a look underneath. All right, and we have under here a very nice and honest looking V12. Uh, very clean. Again, pretty low mileage, just under 50,000 miles. But it's still an old Jag, 
and it's still got old wires, it's still got old rubber components, and etc. So it will need some things. But as we look at it, there's not too much jumping out. I'd say the biggest thing that we do see is our air conditioning has been decommissioned temporarily. You see the wiring here has been zip tied and there's some more wiring here that's been zip tied. These most likely go to our compressor and the various accoutrements that make that work. So uh, if we wanna reconstitute the AC, we're gonna probably need to address the compressor. Uh, the nice thing is this is the original compressor, which means uh, you know parts for these GM units are pretty easy to find. So that's really good. And uh, I just realized something that I try to remember whenever I work on someone's car here. These shirts that I have, they cover up the, the metal buttons so you don't scratch the paint. And here I am walking around with the shirt unbuttoned because I want to look cool. That means I got metal buttons I could rub against the paint. I don't want to do that. Paint's too nice. I'm not used to having this nice of paint. So back at it. Um, so we got nice master cylinder, big reservoir compared to the XJ on here. A little warning here if I can show you. Sometimes the light doesn't help, but uh, close the hood without damage. Push down to engage the safety catch, move the lever, don't slam it shut. So basically you have to pull the interior handle and it actually pulls the hood closed, unlike the uh, XJ6 Series 3. A little different, so I guess they're letting you know, uh, mainly us Americans, when something doesn't latch, we just push it harder. Don't just slam the thing down, you'll actually damage it. So, oh, look at the back of that wheel. You can kind of see it there. Oh, look at that. No, you can't because of the light. Now you see it. All right, we're gonna get some better film of the inside because, well, let me show you one more thing that I, I kind of wish wasn't. It's weird that as I have gotten older, I have really liked originality more and more. And seeing this kind of 2000s-y tape deck and it does actually have a CD changer in the back but to me that's got to be swapped out we got to do something there and I have some parts I'm going to show you I'm going to show you what we're going to put in there all right so let's talk parts a little bit because we did already pick up a few things for this now like I said we're going to rebuild that Lucas ignition amplifier which we know because of that secret video that we showed you is really a GM based HEI module hidden in there. Now you do have to still look at wiring and some other things when you look at it, but it isn't something where you necessarily need to go buy a multi hundred dollar rebuilt unit from somebody. You can rebuild them yourself pretty easily using an off the shelf module. And uh, the only thing that I say there is you try to get the best one that you can and I've just been going OEM. So we've got our AC Delco unit here. Now, like usual, um, I ordered this from my local auto parts store that didn't have it in stock. Would have had to drive a couple towns over, didn't have time to do that. So I ordered it because it would show up in less than two days. Cause I was like, I'm gonna work on this over the weekend. And of course the weekend came and went, I've been caught up on other projects. And suffice to say, I could have ordered this from just about anywhere, probably even saved some money but I was assuming that I needed it right away. And uh, well, we know that wasn't the case, obviously. So let's take a look at that in a second, but look at this. I gotta give them credit, they, they give you a wig. Nice, look at that. I've never seen this before. All right, so this right here is our AC Delco D1906. And yep, that is our module. And look, they actually do give you some thermal grease with it. The last one we got didn't come with the thermal grease. We used our own thermal grease. But yep, GM on the logo there. And uh, we're hoping that these modules, which are finicky and GM cars, is maybe the issue with our JAG. So we're going to try to swap that out. So let's put that aside because this will be our work area for that once we remove it. But I do want to show you one other thing here. I did receive this today. This is a Continental Video Stereo head unit. Stereo head unit, whatever you want to call it. But as you can see here, this is the most unoffensive looking head unit that I could find that would maybe have an OEM style look. This is actually made for European cars that would have orange face uh, and orange face type LCDs like Mercedes and BMWs. Not necessarily the Jag, but it does match fairly well. It looks pretty unoffensive. It doesn't have fast and furious videos that play when you boot it up. 
It doesn't have a screen that comes out and rotates seven times. It doesn't put on a laser light show in the interior of the vehicle. It is just a good, honest looking stereo and a relatively thin one that'll give us some room behind it for the wiring. So here it is right here, as you can see, I hope you can see. Oh yeah, you can see. Um, pretty unoffensive in terms of what it does. Now the nice thing about this, it does have your USB for charging your phone, it has your aux cable, and it does Bluetooth. At least it's supposed to do Bluetooth. I don't see the little Bluetooth logo anywhere. Oh yeah, look at that, there's a little microphone. You wouldn't have a microphone unless you were talking through your Bluetooth. And uh, sure enough, here's the little microphone for your Bluetooth all of your switches and various things, and a nice face plate to finish it off. So at any rate, I just wanted to show you that. I had kind of been searching long and wide. There are some blah punk stereos that are a little more period correct looking, but they're also four to 500 US dollars. There are also a few units that are about $60 that look kind of unoffensive, but they have kind of more modern blue LEDs and things that you just wouldn't expect to see. And to me, it's like, it just stands out in that interior. This unit right here, I got for 129 bucks. So $130 US and has the Bluetooth, has the USB to charge your device on. And uh, you know what? This is gonna fit in there really, really nice since we don't have the original radio. I don't need my hair anymore. So this is gonna wrap it up for part one. Just a quick intro and walk around of this 1989 Jaguar XJ6 and going over a few parts that we've got for it. Coming up next in part two, we're gonna figure out why this car won't run and we're gonna see, can we fix it? If you wanna see more, do us a favor and subscribe because we'll have more on this and many other projects here on Vortex Garage.